My guest today is Kim Becking, and Kim gets challenge. She understands the need to reframe and reclaim herself when life tosses her a curveball. Her challenges have been faced by many of us. She has a passion to tell her story and share the tools she used to not only survive, but thrive. It's a story she can tell through many chapters. Her battle with cancer, the demands of owning her own business, patient advocacy, the balance of being a working mother, the unexpected challenges of marriage, family, and divorce, having a second chance at love, remarrying a widower with two small children, and adjusting to a fabulous new life in a blended household as Kim Becking, mom of three, party of five. Welcome, Kim. It is such a delight to have you with us. I'm excited to be here. Now, Kim, you know, I know that you are really busy with um, breast cancer promotion and work. And during the month of October, you spent a lot of time going everywhere talking about this. And you probably know, as we've discussed, I'm a three-time breast cancer survivor, and that's a, a whole story in itself. But tell us about your breast cancer diagnosis, because you were quite young. Yeah, I actually was diagnosed when I was 30. Um, no family history, caught the lump myself. I had a good friend, Patty, who was diagnosed at 24. So because of her, I was doing my monthly exam and, and found a lump. And, you know, I, I think, as, as, as I'm sure you can attest to, uh, you know, early detection is, is so critical. And, you know, particularly for young women, you know, most of us think, oh, that can happen to us. Uh, you know, we're, we're, not, we're not at the age to even need a mammogram at that point. So knowing our bodies and knowing if there's a change uh, and, you know, really being our own advocate is so important. Absolutely. But you also, um, you learned a lot from that. And you also learned a lot from your divorce. I mean, um, I was fortunate. I mean, actually, I got my first mammogram at 49, which was when I had my first uh, occurrence. And I went because my husband pushed me to go, which I think is quite interesting. But tell us about the lessons, the biggest lesson you learned from, from both breast cancer and your divorce. Absolutely. You know, I mean, th there were there were a lot of lessons in in hard. And, and I think as a part of that, you know, we're all going to face hard in our life, whether it's cancer, whether it's divorce, whether it's loss, whether it's a, a challenge at work. And I, I think really the most important thing that that I learned was learning to take care of myself, learning to listen to my own body, learning to ask and accept help. Not not, you know, I call it resigning as general manager of the universe. Uh, you know, we, we all have these <laughs> notions that we have to be superwoman and super mom and, and super employee. And, uh, you know, we don't often take the time for ourselves. You know, you've heard the saying, if mama ain't happy, ain't nobody happy. But if mama ain't healthy, ain't nobody healthy. So we have to learn to take care of ourselves and learn to say no and, and learn to really focus on what's important in our life and continue to find the joy and the laughter no matter what. Well, that's true, and of course, when you're you're uh, you've got kids. I mean, that's even it's even worse, you know, because my kids were at least a little bit older by that time. But um, you've used all of this. You've used your adversity, your challenges, all of that to get above everything and move forward. Did it did it change you and how you looked at things, and and did it did it give you the strength that you didn't know you had? Yeah, you know, actually, my my breast surgeon told me once when I was going through my treatment that, you know, when you're faced with adversity, it really amplifies who you already were and and really makes you realize you have more strength than you ever thought possible. And so for me, it really reinforced that. And, and I, I will say the perspective that it gave me at such a young age is a perspective that many don't get until they're they're much later in life. And so for that, in my life, you know, really valuing each and every day and making every moment count. And, you know, I mentioned my friend Patty, who was diagnosed at 24, and she ended up passing away at the age of 29. And, you know, so I think because of that, and I also, you know, got remarried after my divorce and married a widower with two kids. And so I think the perspective that I have now on life and living and you know, not letting all the bad stuff get you down and truly trying to continue to find that optimism 
And, you know, some days it's hard. Some days you have to dig deeper and, you know, really um, find that kind of power within to, to continue to find that optimism. But but it's there. And I think that's that's probably one of the, the biggest blessings that I found and, and that I continue to remind myself of on the hard days. Well, you know, it's interesting um, uh, about that because um, I think when you are faced with all of these things, you, first of all, you think you're the only one, you think you're alone in the world and you think nobody is, nobody has all of this happening and nobody has all of this coming down. And it's, it's kind of uh, an interesting phenomenon when you dig deep within yourself to make uh, a decision like that. So for our listeners who are listening to this show, I'm living regret free. Um, what, what advice would you give them? if they were facing change and obstacles in their own life and they might be going through a divorce and they might be having just lost their job and they might be struggling with some kind of, of, of illness, what would you, what would you tell them? You know, I think, um, I say it's my three F's and my three G's, um, of, you know, the, uh, the three F's are really faith for me, uh, in, in my family and my friends and leaning on that support and not being afraid to ask for help. And, and my, my three G's are grace, grit, and gratitude, right? It's giving ourselves permission to feel everything that we need to feel and, you know, to really be vulnerable and open up and share with others how we're feeling and, and to, to really accept that we all deal with things differently. And, you know, this is one of the things both through my cancer and divorce that, um, and other challenges that I faced in my own life and in, in, in helping others through this process, you know, we all process things differently and we need to allow ourselves the ability to be able to do that. And, um, and, you know, not think, oh, no one else is going through this, but, but, but we all go through it differently. And so I think it's important to give ourselves that grace and, you know, really allow ourselves not only the grace, but also, you know, it's what I call sometimes we have to grit up and not give up. Uh, and, and then through that, also finding the gratitude and finding those things every single day, no matter what, there's always something to be thankful for and grateful for. And, and that can truly create peace and joy in your life. And, and you know, it, it gets back to that whole digging deep. We've got it there. We just may have to search for it harder on some days. Well, that's so true. My son always says to me, Mom, nobody is guaranteed it tomorrow. So you have to live every day to its fullest and you have to be able to to always look on that positive side of things. But you, you talk to a lot of women's groups and you hear from a lot of women. What would you say is the biggest struggle that you find women have? You know, I, I really think it's, it's learning to give themselves permission, permission to say no, uh, so that they then have more time to say yes to the things that really matter giving themselves permission to have a bad day and, and know that tomorrow will be better, giving themselves permission to, um, you know, there were certain days during my cancer and even my divorce where I didn't want to get out of bed. You know, I wanted to, to sit there and cry and, um, you know, grieve. And so there were some days I did give myself that, that time and that space, but then the next day I got up. And, and so it's, it's finding that, that balance and, and really just giving yourselves that permission um, to put yourself first, too, without the guilt. And, you know, also realizing no is a complete sentence. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's true. <laughs> well, you have something called Nordies at Noon. I don't know what that means. So tell me a little bit about that. Yeah, so Nordies at Noon is a book that I co-wrote with three other young women about our breast cancer. Um, Patty, uh, my friend that I referred to earlier, she was 24 and single. Jana was 27 and just getting married, uh, wore a wig and prosthesis down the aisle. Jennifer was 27 and five months pregnant, and I was 30 and had a two-year-old. And really, it's, it's every phase of a young woman's life going through cancer. And we started meeting once a month at Nordstrom's Cafe right? Retail therapy too. <laughs> um, at Nordstrom's. And, you know, we started meeting once a month and, and sharing and kind of as our own support group and decided that there weren't enough resources out there at the time for young women and breast cancer. And, and that also, you know, we, we wanted to share those stories collectively. Uh, and so we wrote a book about it. And, you know, it's really, it's, it's not just about breast cancer. It's about, 
you know, overcoming obstacles in life and, and the importance of friendship and family and, and the importance of giving yourself permission to deal with, with things the way you need to deal with them. So you, was, was th- this group was very helpful to you. How do you feel about other support groups? I've never belonged to a support group because I kind of just barreled through all, all three of them, even though, I mean, it, you know, there was a lot of treatment <laughs> there, of course. And, uh, you know, I did go through radiation several times and I did go through chemo and all of that. Um, and I've had 16 surgeries, so that's really had an impact on my body. But right. the thing is, did you, did you, where do you feel uh, support groups fit? The regular support groups, not just sure. your friend support groups, sure. but sure. other support groups. Yeah, you know, and I think it's, it's, it's unique and individual to each person um, because we all deal with things differently. But I, I do think, you know, for me, I tried a regular support group when I was going through my cancer. Um, but there were women just at a different phase in their life. You know, I was, I had a two year old, I was still trying to work. I was, you know, still trying to, to figure those things out. And that's where I really gravitated towards people that were younger that, um, I, I could feel I could relate to. Um, you know, when I was going through my divorce, that was the first time I'd ever actually seen a therapist. And for me, my divorce in many ways was harder than my cancer. And so, um, as, as a part of that process, you know, I, I sought out the support that I need and, and something that I, you know, I, they tell both women and men is that you know, you've got to figure out what that support looks like for you. You know, whether it's a support group through church, whether it's a, a community support group, whether it is a group of family and friends, you know, find out what works for you. And that also gets back to, how we all deal with things differently. You know, I was very open during my cancer and my divorce and I'm, I'm a writer and a speaker. And, and so I, I, I'm willing to be vulnerable and open and share, you know, there are others who don't feel as comfortable doing that. And so they've got to feel, figure out really what works best for them. That is so true. I mean, when my first cancer was diagnosed in 1987 and people didn't really talk about it then. And I did the, uh, I think the first PSA announcement, public service announcement they ever had in the Miami area, and they tracked 250 women who went and got mammograms because of that, and yet it was still not really even talked about, you know, back then. And um, I'm just wondering, did the cancer have the impact on your divorce, or was it something totally unrelated? You know, I think it was probably totally unrelated. Um, I I know the divorce rates are a lot higher for people that go through not just cancer, but other healthcare crises um, or, you know, big changes in their life. Um, For me, you know, I'd married my high school sweetheart. He was great during my cancer. I talk about how wonderful he was um, in Nordy's at noon. Uh, And then about seven years later, um, you know, we we went went through uh, with the divorce. So, you know, I would say they're unrelated, um, but, you know, who, who knows? You'd have to ask my ex-husband that. <laughs> <laughs> well, then you met this widower, which is very unusual, although I did marry a man. Uh, he wasn't a widower. He was divorced, but he, believe it or not, back in the 50s, got his uh, custody of his children, which was very unusual. Yeah. And so um, I, I married a man with, with two little children and... Um, got pregnant right away. So within 13 months of marriage, I had three children under the age of seven and a business to run. And that was a whole experience in itself. Wow. But what would, <laughs> what would you say? I mean, um, what would you say has been the best piece of advice that you've ever received when facing your challenges? You know, I, I, I think it's to um, kind of going back to what I said earlier, resigning as general manager of the universe and taking care of yourself and and always trying to find the good. I mean, when I was going through my divorce, you know, I had married my high school sweetheart. We were together 22 years, married 16 years. We never had problems. I didn't even know there was an issue. And, and then he left me for a very good friend and neighbor whom I was helping with her divorce, giving her money, watching her four children. And, and then, you know, they got married. She took my name because my name was Kim, as was hers. And so, you know, I had to then rebrand not just my personal life, but my professional life as well. And so, you know, I I think um, as as a part of that, it it really is that it gets back to that staying positive and finding your joy. And, you know, it's what I call mammogram shoes and pap smear purses. You know, I I had a woman, I had a woman um, at, at a speaking event once named Jane. And, you know, I love shoes and I love purses and 
I went up to her and said, oh my 